So, Lamont, the question that I've always had for you, especially, is how do we keep our um, our motivation in dating? David and Zay both have had, you know, different kind of DMs from Shoot Your Shot or otherwise. We know that people feel as if the dating pool has a little piss in it. But how do we keep our motivation, like, to keep doing it? Because it feels like you get a little cynical yeah. after yeah, a so, while. So I think, like, if, have you ever gone on a date with a guy or been in a relationship with a guy? And there are moments that you're like, oh, my God, I absolutely love it. You have that warm, fuzzy feeling. You enjoy his space, his company, the sex, the spirituality. You have to keep those things in your memory. Even if you have to journal and write that down. Hey, I went on a date with Michael and I loved the conversation. Or he had a beautiful smile and just lit me up. When it gets rough and hard, you go back and look at those things. Or you remember those things. And you're like, hey, this is part of the process where it's going to be hard, but there are times and good moments that you get to experience when you're dating. So live in the moment and enjoy the great things about the guys and the dating experience. Okay. So I'm going to pivot to you, David and Zay. Is it, is it as simple as Lamont? Well, I mean, Lamont makes it simple, but it's not easy, but is it as simple as it is? How, how do you stay motivated to like do the dating? David, I'll start with you. Um, I mean, I, I like the idea of companionship. I always, I've had long-term relationships before. I had two, two seven-year relationships where I was damn near married, you know. Um, so I've been, I, I know how to be a companion. I like the idea of having somebody come home to. I like the idea of, of being able to go out with one person and having that type of, you know, idea. So that's the thing that kind of drives me. Um, I had an example, like my parents, my parents been together for like 44 years. They're still married. Like I've, I've watched my father now to this day, my mom's washing dishes, come kiss on the back of her neck and dance with her in the house, throwing some slow jams. Like I aspire to have that thing with somebody. So that, that keeps me in the, in the running of like, I'm going to have that. Now that ain't my story. That's so beautiful. <laughs> and that ain't my motherfucking story. Zay, I'm gonna come to you before I chime in. Like, how do you stay motivated to keep dating? Um, for, well, part of it is for the same reason, you know, different successful couples I've seen. The other part of that is me and some of my friends have a saying where the men just keep getting better. So as I date one person and I learn from them what I like. Are you and saying like, bitter with an I or better with an E? Better as in um, better with an E, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. It improves. Um, but as I learn from the one person I'm dating or however that works, then I apply what went well to the next, and then I apply what to look out for for the next. Therefore, I'm in control of how much better the dating gets. I say that. I mean, I, I, uh, I think the reason why it's so difficult for me to, to like get back on the horse is because different than David, my like divorce was the best aspect of my parents' marriage. Like the fact that they are not together, the family, the unit, they, them as individuals, they are a thousand times happier, uh, because they split up. And so I don't have you know, uh, uh, parents that, that kissed each other and were warm and fuzzy. So like the idea, like I'll, I'll admit for myself that the second that it gets hard, I'm like, I'm good. Uh, but I, I will tell you, relationships are complicated. There are times where it does get hard. There are times where it's warm and fuzzy. It's about being committed, sticking in there, and knowing that no matter what your flaws or mistakes are, that this person is going to be there to support you. And that is the beautiful thing about marriage and love and what people, most people aspire to and they want. But you have to have the uncomfortable conversations and go through that, through that process. And see, for me, Lamont, I think that I appreciate the uncomfortable conversations. I appreciate them because that's how you get better. That's how you get closer. But I think what the, the cynical part of me is saying that I can commit fully to a difficult conversation, to a tough road to hoe, because I know it's not always going to be tough if we're, if, if we picked each other, right. Right. But what I don't understand is these non-committal men that are in the dating pool. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And that and that makes me feel non-committal because I'm like, well, now we got to figure this shit out. But because the conversation got a little tense, then all of a sudden they're out and now I'm out and, they, and then my feelings are hurt because I'm committed to something, but then mm-hmm. but you threw me away. It feels as if a lot of these dating situations that, that men are in now are so one-sided. Yes. How do we overcome that, Lamont? Th- therapy is a beautiful thing, I will say. I think that, you know, if you... Go to the gym. You should also see a therapist because um, it, you, we have to have difficult conversations. There are times where your mate, your partner is going to piss you off. And if you run at just a simple argument or even a big warranted argument, um, you're going to miss out on an amazing guy. So I, I say when, when it gets tough, that is the time to lean in. Um, I, I, you know, I'll share a personal story. Like when my um, when Art and I were dating, his sister died, right? And that is the time that I stood up in the relationship to support him, support the family. A lot of guys would be like, oh, I can't do that. Like, I can't, your sister died. We got to take care of these kids now. Some people are like, I'm not taking care of those kids. Those are your kids. But you have to step up in a relationship to have someone that's worth it because there are times where I've needed him to step up when I couldn't do things. So you got to support each other through the bad and through the good times. Okay. And so, uh, David, I I have a question for you specifically because you mentioned that you've been in two long-term relationships, Mm -hmm. seven years plus. And so what is keeping you single now? You had, you got the muscle, obviously you, you understand what it takes to make a relationship work. Why are you single now? It's a great question. I think, um, a large part of the, I've been single for the last five years. Um, this March made, made you know five years specifically and i've been in therapy as well i've been learning more and more about myself and dedicating time to getting to be a better me because i know at the end of the day that's going to serve me and or a future partner um but um i mean i don't know i feel like a large part of what i've experienced has been people who like the idea of a relationship but not the actual work that goes into maintaining and or starting and establishing whatever um they just like the idea they like that like i said maybe the affection some of the attention uh, maybe the ideas of companionship um maybe because they're feeling lonely but when it comes to actually going through anything together having uncomfortable conversation really communicating being transparent and some of the things that come along with really establishing trust bonds and everything that they, they they just don't do it and i'm past that nonsense <laughs> so Hmm. Okay. And so follow up for you, David. So now seven plus seven is 14. So I'm assuming 14 years ago, you were single. Mm-hmm. No, plus five, because so it's 19 years ago, 20 mm-hmm. years ago, damn near you were single. Mm-hmm. At 20 years ago, you were 20 years younger. What were you looking for? What are you looking for now that's different than what you were looking for then? Um, 20 year old me, um, super duper low self-esteem didn't feel like i hopped on the first person that paid me any attention and wanted to be with me to be very honest that was my first relationship um so isn't you know, it all I, for all of us though right right and i was 21 and they were 41 with a fuck so, boy, and i was gonna marry him who i met so on black gay chat <laughs> oh god so you know we had got together and, and that was its own thing. And then, you know, we, we broke off because it was really toxic. It, was, it wasn't good. And I met a really nice guy. So I went from a really mean person to a really nice person. And mm-hmm. I think psychologically somewhere inside of me, I said, well, if I have a nice one, I, this is the one I should be with that. Not I have to coming out of being in, in hell with the other one. And I stood in a relationship way too long where we just became friends. And so I, I learned more about me, things I wasn't being truthful about to myself. Um, and what my needs were, what what wasn't being met, um, what I wanted in a relationship. I just felt like I needed to be with a good person since I already came out with, some, with the craziness. So I think I learned a lot more again about myself. And, I, and that's why I committed myself to having therapy and making sure I learned about myself more, what my triggers are, what's making me tick, um, and trying to be my best self. I love that. I love that. So, uh, Zay, I'm going to come to you. What keeps you single? What What has you single now? Although you had a date the other day, so... <laughs> and let you tell her you are a monogamous dater, so you could be in a full relationship right now. But 
Oh, uh, apparently I've put myself in one. So find but, your basketball team, Zay. I'm, listen, I'm about to start loading up my starting five. So anybody out there, <laughs> come at me, okay? It's my team. I mean, you might get some legs thrown at you in the DMs after this one, Zay. I mean, Who we'll knows? see. Just, just keep them together until I find out if I actually like you. Because you oh, throw okay. them up okay. quick, I'm throwing you, you out. You might need to spread the legs open so you can see their face. Like Maybe you- so. I don't know. But if I got to go through all that, uh, who else have you been spreading for? <laughs> um, okay. Community okay. Okay. is not for me. Okay. So. But what keeps you single now, Zay? Um, well, actually, I just, I recently, uh, I've been single for a year now from like a three-year relationship. So after that one, um, I just wanted to take some time for me to kind of clear my head and figure out where I wanted to chart forward because it wasn't like a um, horrible breakup. It was just two great people who didn't work out. Mm-hmm. So my my whole vision now is let me figure out specifically what I want and what direction I want to go in with dating and where I want to go with my life. Because I feel like if I can fine tune those things, I can actually like be a better uh, <laughs> shooter. When it comes to dating, so well, yeah. I think that's a perfect segue to my question for you, Lamont. I think that, in, in my experience at least, it's the first ninety days that will determine the trajectory of a relationship. But I would also say that the first ninety days are the hardest to get over when it comes to somebody new. You don't know if they matter to you, if we're committed to the same thing, if we're going in the same direction. What insight can you give us to help shooters, singles, queer men get? over the 90 day hump so the 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 first 90 days are supposed to be awesome like they're supposed to be like you're getting to know each other you should be seeing each other at least once a week not going like oh i'll see you in three weeks because you're not dating at least once a week you should see each other face to face and to get over that 90 day hump it is really for you to set goals and expectations like what about this person do you need to experience for you to say, I want to be exclusive with this person? Do you need to have an argument to see how you handle conflict? Do you need to have sex? Do you need to meet the family? Um, you need to, what is your benchmark, right? Do you need to see anything? If you can't pinpoint what you need to see, you are just aimlessly dating. Aimless. And most people don't set like what they need to see. They don't. They just say, do I feel good? And do I like it? Mm -mm. And that's how you end up in relationships that are not good for you because you haven't set what you need to see to make this person your man. You know, Lamont, you might be on to something with this dating. You should start a business. (laughs) You you should start a business to do this dating stuff because you might be on to something with that one. You said, maybe, maybe. what are you expecting? Get, do you have benchmarks for your dating situation? What do I need to see in the first 90 days to make it through? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You really should go into business doing this. <laughs> I mean, no, I, I, I it, think guys are just like, does he make me feel good? I'm lonely. And so they end up in a relationship with someone they don't even know. Someone they, like, you know, I know someone who said they've been married for two years and they've never argued with their husband. I said, well, you probably never had really spoken your true voice. Like, you're just going along. So I, I think it's okay hmm. for there to be times where it's uncomfortable. There are times where it's loving. Um, you should have some spiritual connection. Like, you got to set those benchmarks so you can see if this is Mr. Right instead of just I'm bored, I'm lonely, I'm so we just go kick it a little longer. 